It is media day. We have finally made it. The NBA season is here. And everything is the same for the Orlando Magic. Everything is different. Plus, Paolo Bancaro on the cusp of stardom and the best news we could hear before training camp. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are the Locked On Magic. Today is October 2nd, 2023. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of follow me over at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we'll get you ready for Media Day and all the festivities going on at Avon Health Center. But the big thought of the season, why everything's the same for the Orlando Magic entering this year, But everything is completely different. We're going to dive into that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there is a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. Today's podcast. This Media Day podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Before we dive into today's uh, main discussion, a couple of scheduling things for you to get ready for. Um, today is obviously Media Day. Monday, October 2nd is Media Day. I am going to have a Media Day spectacular up for you. I'm hoping to have it up on the late afternoon. I'm going to probably split it into two parts, so we'll have a late afternoon, probably a mid-morning uh, podcast uh, and YouTube video as well. So be on the lookout uh, for that. My goal is to get it up mid-afternoon or late afternoon, um, hopefully or early somewhere there. Um, you know, at the very least, you'll have two episodes covering media media day on Tuesday. Again, hopefully one Monday afternoon, one Tuesday. Tuesday we will do another or what Tuesday for Wednesday we'll do another big episode for the first practice. Of, of training camp, kind of dive into what's going on training camp. And then Wednesday, uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock, my plan is Wednesday at 6 o'clock on the Lockdown Magic YouTube page as well as on the Lando Twitter page, we'll do a live episode. Take your questions live, preview the Orlando Magic season, do it all. So big episode, two episodes coming to you Monday and Tuesday. Another big episode coming to you Tuesday after practice. Then live episode with your questions. Wednesday, rough going to start roughly at six o'clock. Locked on Magic YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash at, at sign locked on magic or on Twitter spaces. I think I can still access Twitter spaces. We'll we'll figure that part out. Um, but on the Orlando Magic Daily page as well. So lots to get going to here to start this season. The first week of the regular season, the first week of the season. We're gonna go big. We're gonna get it all done here on Locked On Magic. But we got to start here with the introduction, the, the introduction to the year, what this year is all about. Um, the answer is both simple and complex. What to expect from the Magic, what they're going to do is both really exciting, but also really uncertain. And, and I want to make sure that that we understand that, that this season is a season of discovery, that nothing is going to be given, nothing is going to be guaranteed that doesn't lessen the excitement of what's to come the mantra that jamal mosley jeff weltman have given to us throughout the course of this this summer this off season is once again the goal to level up once again the goal to play better basketball and me being the coach speaker that i like to think myself i, I am We've been spending a good chunk of this summer trying to figure out what the heck that means. What does it mean to play better basketball? Well, obviously for a young team that committed a lot of turnover, it meant to reduce turnovers, meant to be more efficient on offense, more efficient on defense, to just really hone in on the details. And that is, once again, 
the message that Jamal Mosley gave uh, in an interview with Dane Savage of OrlandoMagic.com, actually saying that we're not going to hide from the expectations everyone's putting on us. Paolo Bancaro said it back in April. Playoffs are bust. And I don't think the players are going to budge off of that. They believe, I know you listening believe, this is a playoff team. And look, I'm not one to give in to predictions. I'm not one to, you know, set a limit, set a floor, set a ceiling on, on a team. I want to season out. But I will say this unequivocally. This Magic team should be a postseason team. They should at least be in the play-in tournament. That would be the goal. Now, failing to reach that goal, I don't think necessarily means heads need to roll. I know there are some people that do believe that. But this is a team that is capable of making the postseason. And that's obviously kind of the place to start. Jamal Mosley says don't run from those expectations. Acknowledge them. Accept them because... All 30 teams have that goal. Too. But what the trick of this season is going to be is the work it's going to take to make that goal happen, to make the playoffs happen. And, and that's the great unknown of this season. Yes, the Atlanta went 29 and 28 after December 7th. Uh, 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 even national media have, even national media very plainly admit, like, look, they started. They had a really bad start, but they were playing 500 basketball the rest of the way. This is not some pushover team at the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings. Everyone acknowledges that about this Magic team, but just because they did that does not mean they will do it again. Steve Clifford would said this all the time because he too dealt with a team with teams with very little turnover, and the Magic have very little turnover. There will be a lot familiar about the Orlando Magic. The same teammates. The only three players that are off the roster are Bull Bull. Uh, the only two players off the roster are Bull Bull and Michael Carter-Williams. Admiral Schofield's still there. Jamal Mosley's entering his third year. He knows what he's doing. The players know what Jamal Mosley expects. Mosley knows how this team will respond and grow and adapt. Because that is the same does not mean the results will be the same. And that's the key message that Jamal Mosley's been trying to hammer into his team, it seems, throughout this offseason. Success is about the work. Success is about coming to work every day, putting the time in, putting it efficiently and effectively, having it translate onto the floor. All these things we talk about, all these goals that are out there, only get accomplished through that work. I've said this a million times. I will probably say this a lot. The Magic could be a better team. They could play better basketball and still miss the play in tournament. That's how much better the East is. And that's how fine the margin of error is between making and using the postseason. Plain and simple, especially with where we expect the Magic to be. Everything can't be the same. Everything's got to be a little bit better. This is the essence of what it means to level up. This is the essence of what the Magic's goals are this year. We clearly saw last year that the team leveled up, as Jamal Mosley put it, throughout the entire year. Those were the terms of engagement. Those were the terms by which we were judging this Magic team. The Magic clearly accomplished that. They clearly leveled up. They won more consistently. They experienced postseason pressure and got a taste of how difficult it is to win. The next level then for the Orlando Magic is to win more consistently again. To not have the 5-20 and 20 start. To limit those losing streaks. To build on winning streaks to put themselves in a position where they're playing in the postseason. Forget anything beyond this year, because I know I've talked a lot about this in the context of what the next moves are. Those moves are done. Drew Holiday's on the six and a half. Maybe James Harden gets traded. Maybe Malcolm Brogdon gets traded. But this is our team. Again, the Magic really valued their continuity. That was an intentional thing. 
this team is going to feel very familiar. Roles are going to be very similar, if not the same as last year. But what comes next, what happens next, is about how this team is different. It's about the work they put in to get better, both individually and as a group. It's about how they handle the pressure they're clearly embracing. The pressure we're putting on them. I was talking, I was at the UCF game. I was covering the UCF game this weekend. Sorry about that, uh, Knights. Um, and, you know, people know me as the magic guy. They ask me a lot about the magic. And there are a lot of hardened people in the Orlando market that know how important it is for this group to make it. For, for this team to clearly take a step forward and show some results. The team and the franchise might be doing everything they can to reduce that pressure, but it exists. It absolutely exists. This team has to make the postseason. That's their next step. That's their next level. And that's different than anything that this group has experienced before. The pressure, not only of external expectations, but the pressure of their own expectations, of what they expect of themselves. That is different. And it's going to be a challenge for them to come through. They are more than capable of doing it, though. They have a coach who's going to guide them the best that he can. He's never been through a playoff chase either, as a head coach, at least. And that's going to be the exciting and fun part of the season. It is still a season of discovery and growth. I want to emphasize that. It is still a season of players figuring out who they are and this team figuring out who it is. But that's not to keep them from producing and giving us hopefully a result we can remember. It's time to get to work. A lot of that focus and a lot of that improvement, though, is on one player. And we can't talk about the upcoming season without mentioning its perhaps present and future star. We'll talk about what to expect from Paolo Bancaro this year coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. Look, I've had I've I like going to games. I go to game I go to games all the time. You know, I, don't, I as as media, but sometimes when I go as a fan. It's usually a for the moment thing. I mean, Tuesday we got the Lightning playing the Florida Panthers at Am- at, at the Amway Center, uh, bringing NHL hockey to to, to Orlando. Uh, I've been on the road and wanted to go to go to a game. I usually like to play my vacations around games, and so when I go to a game, I don't want to worry about my tickets. And you shouldn't have to be worrying when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best guaranteed price, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The last time I went to a game as a fan um, was to go see the Rays back in, God, it was like June, July. And I bought my tickets through Game Time. I had a little problem with my tickets, actually. Um, you know, the MLB app was really hard to figure out. Game Time took care of it. They texted me a link to my tickets. I had my tickets on the phone. And it was easy to get in and out of the game. Had a great time. I, I love. I, I would. I would use Game Time for tickets no matter what. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see views of your seat before you buy. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront, no hidden fees or anything like that. So you're no know getting a deal, a great deal with those hidden fees. You can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. That's L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You know we are getting close to the season when I'm reading the Game Time uh, ad reads because. That means there's games coming. The Orlando Magic will start their preseason next Tuesday in New Orleans or at New Orleans Tuesday, at Cleveland next Thursday, 
then home for New Orleans and Flamengo from Brazil. Um, so preseason basketball right around the corner. We got training camp before that. A lot to get to. But um, I, I always, you know, I come up with my own NBA sayings and, and my own things. But I think everyone understands why this feels different. Um, we've been through rebuilds before. We've been through seasons where a young Magic team showed promise, hung around maybe the play race a little bit longer, or tried to sneak into the back end late in the season. We have seen this script before. If there is something that can happen during a failed rebuild, we have seen it over the last decade. So why does this feel different? Why does this feel like the light at the end of a long tunnel? Why does this feel like the start of something? The answer to that question is, is just, it's, it's both simple and complex. It's because Franz Wagner looks ridiculously good. And Paolo Bancaro looks that much better. Winning the NBA draft lottery, getting the number one pick, selecting a player who looked so good his rookie year, has completely changed the outlook of this team. It's completely changed what feels possible for Orlando Magic. And allows us to think big. No offense to Aaron Gordon. Great piece on a champion team. Was ever the star the Magic needed. No offense to Nikola Vucevic. Put up tons of great numbers. Did whatever was asked for him. Did the grab and the attention that a star brings. At the end of the day, and I know I say this a lot, you go as far as your star takes you. When you go to the playoffs, the stars all elevate their games. They find a way to beat defenses that know what's coming. And that's what wins in the postseason. That's what the Magic believe they have in a guy like Paolo Bancaro. His stats last year, 20 points per game, about six rebound, 6.8 rebounds per game. His stats last year, seven point, I think 7.8 free throw attempts per game. His stats last year put him in the class of stars. Beyond just the rookie debut, the best rookie debut since LeBron James, the scoring numbers, the free throw numbers, the stuff that he was doing is only done by all-star players. And yes, it is a chicken and egg problem about whether Paolo Bencaro can make the all-star game next year. To me, that's that's not necessarily the measure. If Paolo or Franz make the all-star team, it will be because their team is doing well, not because of their own star power yet. They will get there because of a team reward, because the team is playing well. They can get there, and that's kind of the point. What does Paolo Bancaro need to do to help elevate them? Because as much as all these other players are great, and, and you know, Paolo and Franz are the guys who have to step their games up for the Magic to reach their next level. Like, yes, healthy Wendell Carter goes a long way to helping the Magic make the play. Jalen Suggs turning corner and developing a more consistent offensive game. Absolutely. Markel Fultz continuing to look more and more like Washington Markel Fultz or some version of that. Absolutely. But make no mistake about it. This team is built around Paolo Bancaro. This team will rise and fall based on his development. And in some way, that's the storyline of this season. Why didn't the Magic go after another star? Well, because... Paolo's probably not ready to share that. He probably needs another season of failing, of learning, of developing, of growing without the pressure of it costing the magic something. He needs another season of learning what a good shot is and what a bad is and having to make those mistakes. That's all okay. But what the magic need to see from him it's fewer of those mistakes. And again, this is just the message for the entire team. To see fewer of those mistakes and those miscues. Be a more efficient shooter. To, 
make more free throws when he gets to the line, to make more threes. Take out that one for 32 February, and he shot 33% three. I'm not as worried about that as, as others might be. But more than that, he has to begin to learn how to lift others up. And that's why his experience with Team USA was so important. He didn't have the ball in his hands. He wasn't the lead scorer. He wasn't the main guy. He had to find his offensive pockets, but learn to contribute in other ways. Learn to be a leader in other ways. And that was the thing Jamal Mosley said he saw the most out of Paolo in his World Cup run. Was that Paolo was learning to be a defense leader. Was more vocal defensively. And doing all the little things that help a team win. Say what you want about Team USA. I think they'd all agree their run was a failure because they didn't win the, win the gold, much less any medal. But the, the minutes that Paolo was in, the U.S. typically won. And it was because he sacrificed so much of himself to help that team win, to do what that team needed him to do, to allow the team to play this fast pace with its center. And the Magic are going to move around. He's going to play some point. He's going to play some center. He's going to play both four positions. He's going to move around. His role is going to be dynamic, as dynamic as he is. But what the Magic need for Paolo and Caro is to begin putting those pieces together to make not only himself better and more efficient, his team better. That's what stars do. They attract attention because they're great and attract attention to make others great. That is the challenge for Paolo Vancaro this year. And look, I don't think anyone's expecting to have it all down. We've seen a lot of stars struggle. We've seen a lot of stars they typically get better in their second seasons. I said summer, as good as Paolo Vancaro was last year, that is the worst he is going to be. He is going to get better. He is going to be a better player this year. The question for the Magic, though, the question that they'll ultimately need to be asking themselves, and look, it's going to be this way for the next seven years, hopefully. Is is he the kind of player that you could build a championship around? Maybe that's two, three years down the road that we have to ask ourselves that question. For now, it's about Bancaro taking that step up, taking that level up, and showing us that, yes, he is a star. Among stars. Jamal Mosley did give that interview to Dan Savage. I've referenced it a few times here. You can find that on OrlandoMagic.com. Let's talk about one thing he said that really important heading into training camp. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. If you haven't read it yet, uh, Jamal Mosley did a one-on-one with Dan Savage of OrlandoMagic.com. Dan's a buddy. Love him to death. Definitely friendly media. So, you know, take it is a grain of salt, but there were some interesting news nuggets in there. You know, I mentioned, you know, the really the message about playing better basketball is about doing the work every day and, and learning details and, and making sure the details are fine. Again, process over results. I know everyone hates hearing that. It's really true. Take care of your work, do the right things every day. The results are going to take care of themselves. But Mosley said something else that was super, super important. The most magical. Things you could say, I will knock on wood. My table's made of wood. Everybody on the Orlando Magic is healthy and expected to participate in training camp when it begins on Tuesday. Mad, if you've been a Magic fan following this team for the last three years, you do not need to know how welcome that is. The Orlando Magic's top lineup last year played only about 550 minutes together over 36 games. Starting only played 36 games together. The Magic last year with the second most lost the second most games due to injury of any team in the league. The Miami Heat were first. Um, so maybe not an excuse, but it is an excuse. The Magic two years ago lost the most games to injury by a wide margin. The Magic have been dealing with serious injuries, long-term injuries that have kept guys out for a very long time, for several years. And yes, I'm not expecting everybody on this team to play 82 games. That's, that's just not going to happen. Um, but to train camp with everybody healthy is 
it's a blessing. Um, it's a really important thing. Even for a team that has been together, that knows what each other does. This is where your install happens. This is where the basics of who you are. Are And if you have to learn that by watching or learn that on the fly, it's tough. You're behind the curve. And look, the magic start to the schedule is really, really tough. I'm not going to deny that. But there's no 5-20 and 20 start coming. For Orlando, as Jalen Suggs has said, repeat is very interested in getting off to a better start, starting from ahead rather than playing from behind like they were last year. Training camp is critical. And with the depth this team has, the competition level is going to be high. The Magic should be really focused uh, and really ready to go. They tip off in 23 days, October 20, October 25th, I believe. Oh, no, I'm blanking. Now I'm hoping I got that date right. October 25th. Three weeks away. You know, yeah, three weeks away. Um, the Magic are going to be in their best position in a long time to get off to a fantastic start. This is great news. Find out on, on Monday, um, you know, what, what restrictions Jonathan Isaac might be under um, coming off of his surgery. Again, all indications are that he is really healthy, that he is ready to go for training camp, but it's been a while for him since he's been through a training camp. I'm sure he'll be monitored. I'm sure a lot of other, I'm sure Paolo, Franz, Bo, Goga, Joe Ingles, they'll all be monitored after they played in the world cup, just to make sure that they're in the right space. But Having everybody ready training camp, participating in training camp, that's a huge bonus. That's a huge benefit. It's going to help this team a lot. And again, it's something we haven't seen in a little while. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. You're tuning in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the following the podcasts to your podcast and able to device for lace on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at Oh, Magic Daily. Like I said, just reiterating the calendar. Tomorrow is media day. We will have a big media day episode. I'm going to split it into two parts. Um, So we'll do a two-part media day episode. I'm hoping to have the first part out Monday evening. Go ahead and say Monday evening. Um, Monday evening. Second part will be out Tuesday, probably mid-morning, early afternoon. Um, Have that to look forward to. Uh, Then... Tuesday for Wednesday, probably Tuesday late afternoon, early evening. We'll do our Tuesday podcast, um, recapping the first day of training camp. That Wednesday at 6 o'clock on the YouTube page, on the Lockdown Magic YouTube page, as well as on Twitter spaces on at OmagicDaily, we'll do a live episode. Um, So definitely tune in for that. Questions ready, I'll answer your questions there. Uh, And then also for me tomorrow, don't forget to follow me on socials at Philip R underscore MD at o Magic Daily and on my Patreon page at the Orlando Magic Hub, uh, patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. I'm going to be covering everything for me today. I'll probably post it to the Patreon page as well to get you up to, up to speed there. But busy, busy day. It's media day. My favorite, one of my favorite days of the year. Going to be happy to have the guys back in the building and happy to get this season going. I know you've been looking forward to the season. I've been looking forward to the season. It's going to be a fun one. But until then, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic, this has been Phil Prosper and Mike. We'll see you again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.